Welcome to the session, Evolution of Print Management. So far, you've seen and heard about Pharos, who we are, what's our vision, and what are some of our plans to move ahead. As current customers, I'd expect you to find it exciting and fresh that Pharos is making this journey to better improve our solutions, our services, and our relationships. It's certainly exciting for me. Today, I want to spend a little time <clears throat> talking to you about some types of solutions, some of which may match up with things you're doing today, uh, others perhaps you didn't know about or that you could do with Pharos, um, and open your eyes to some of the possibilities around how to make your solutions a better fit for your environment. That's what this conference is all about these two days. Evolution is the idea of change, not judging good or bad, but that things change over time. We see in the print management space, and we've had our eyes and ears on this space for many years. Waste savings is one of the major things we hear about, and definitely something worth focusing on. It's a little cartoon I put up <clears throat> to show some of the waste and evolution. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we've been seeing in the higher education print management space and the print management space as a whole. So here's sort of a, uh, an overview <clears throat> of the main categories in which we're seeing some big changes in the print management space. Uh, so over the next half hour or so, we're going to walk through these uh, from identity, payment, and device controls through reporting and further improving your environments using the FARO solutions that you may already have in place today. So starting with identity, <clears throat> we're seeing a lot of organizations go from unknown users with no form of identification uh, to domain and directory services and student IDs and cards. Um, <clears throat> with either magnetic or barcode or, or even now into contactless technologies. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing that happen as well, uh, which you can experience today with our IMFP area. Organizations are doing more and more with centralized data and cards, uh, managing accounts, door access, vending, laundry, food services, and the list is growing. Now, we know that much of this has been around for years, but there are still new players to this one-card market and one-card idea. Again, there's no right or wrong solution. There are plenty of systems that have unknown or unauthenticated users, and they operate quite happily. It's the best for them. It all depends on the organizational and environmental needs of your setup. Here's another example from within the Uniprint software that you might be seeing today. Using the Pharos client software, pop-up software, uh, to capture information about who is printing. So on the left-hand side, there's the username and password pop-up prompt uh, to identify who a user is. And then on the right-hand side, we have some of the notification components of the Pharos client as well. Uh, so the top one being cost acceptance where you have to check yes or no to accept the cost and the activity of the printing. And in the bottom right corner is the cost notification uh, setting of which you would see with the print client. So some organizations are moving to a world of mobile print <clears throat> where you can email or upload your print jobs, which you'll also be hearing about in a later session. Another place where we're seeing some change is in the shift of payment methods. So on the left-hand side, we see cash and coin and stored value cards um, <clears throat> to, uh, to, a, to an area where we're seeing cashless systems and systems that store funds centrally, uh, sometimes for more than just print. Funds can be stored in the Pharos database or in the centralized systems of any one of our supported billing gateways that connect with Uniprint. So this pairs very tightly with the identity management because you typically need to know who your users are if you plan to store funds for them. 
Another area in which we're seeing some changes is around the controls of the devices. So the market seems to be shifting and has been a, for a while away from external control devices such as PC stations and Omega terminals uh, to embedded solutions. So this here is a setup that you see here. <clears throat> it's all too common in the schools that I visit. It's a printer next to a PC release station on a desk with mouse and keyboard, which also sometimes mysteriously disappear, all next to a copier or multifunction device, and then sometimes even next to that is a fax device or scanner. So all of these machines that can be handled with one machine uh, with today's devices, uh, it's taking up you know, a whole lot of floor space. So when the device for printing and or copying is a multifunction device that Pharos can have an embedded footprint, it can all be put on one device. So here's just some of the uh, vendors that Pharos has solutions embedded. Uh, so our software goes on the device or in the device and the console of the copy machine multifunction device uh, is right there in front of you on the uh, on the machine. Take some time during the conference to test the devices that you see here. Uh, each of you has been provided a contactless identification card and you've been imported into the system so the devices are available on long breaks and will be available for your use. We also have the community PCs in the back of the room for using and exploring the Ferris community. I encourage you to take a look at each of the these devices and take a look at the community and ask someone from Pharos if you have any questions. So as an overview, this is sort of a takeaway generalization <clears throat> around the types of environments that we see. Um, on the top is unauthenticated, authenticated, and back office is kind of the evolution that I see. Uh, and then there are just some of the features of those evolutions from log on to how that people submit print jobs, how they release print jobs, how users are billed or charged for that activity, and the reporting capable uh, from all of that. We're going to talk about all of that as well. All right, that's enough. So we're already customers of Pharos. We already have the Uniprint system. Can you show me how to help with my environment today? That's probably what you're thinking. You're right, by partnering with Pharos, you're probably well on your way to improving your environment. You've taken the initiative to work with Pharos and have come to this event, and for that we certainly thank you. But what now? Well, <clears throat> I wonder how many of you have a secure release environment and consolidated drivers and print queues. Less waste is one way that we can help our sites to improve their environments. As our customers implement secure release here, we see their waste and recycling costs decrease dramatically. Perhaps you're already using secure release here in at least some capacity. What else? Can you grow your secure release environment uh, to take over additional devices, additional printers, student areas versus faculty areas? Make sure you're use it, utilizing all of your licensing. If you've had some printers retire over the last few years and have licensing to spare, hook up a printer in an area that was not previously managed by Pharos. Or if you don't need it, call Pharos and speak to them and have the uh, device taken off your account and save a few bucks. All right, next question. <clears throat> I wonder how many of you have an optimized fleet with very few models and manufacturers in a planned and organized way. Work towards optimizing your environment. I would venture to say that almost every site can benefit from a review of their device output and optimization. Again, there's no right answer as different environments have different needs. So whether you have two or five manufacturers devices and five or 12 models, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you've reviewed the data available to you to make the best decisions about your environment. The picture here shows a real site with each color block a device that our team mapped out prior to a device optimization. <clears throat> the screen on the right shows that same environment after the optimization. I think the before picture is about two persons per device ratio. The desired or after picture 
is what the customer achieved is in the six to ten people per device. <clears throat> All right, I have to admit this is not the exciting part of the presentation. Uh, I'm not about to wow you with some truth about printing that you could have never figured out before. This is the dull, boring stuff, but it's got legs. The data from Pharos and reports you can get out of Pharos, how you decide to use it can help you see trends over time as well as help you make better decisions about the environment. This here is the print site summary report. Use it to show total print information and total costs along with what was not printed. This is a good high level indicator of your overall volume as well as what the system might be saving you in waste printing. Look deeper. Does anything seem too high or too low? The printer summary report is probably the most used report from Pharos. It shows every managed device in your environment along with high level print jo job details, counts and totals. If one device is a really high volume and another is really low volume, what does that mean? This can be used to determine which devices might be over or underutilized. This can help you make decisions about device placement and or replacement. So maybe in an area where you've got real high volume, you either need a bigger device or maybe two devices. In an area that have very low volume, maybe that's an area where a device can be retired or removed from service. Or maybe it's a specialty device that cannot be removed from service. So these are all kinds of decisions that I want you to make with data and with, with power. <clears throat> Just like companies, schools are doing this kind of stuff, being able to better support infrastructure makes for a better experience for the users too. All this while you save money. Sounds pretty good to me. Might be worth looking at the data from your Faro system. I wonder how many of you are using some sort of the reporting from Faro system and which reports you're using. What do they do for you? What are they missing? Or what do you need them to do for you? Share this information in the Faro's community. Um, and let your other other users see that. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. That's what this is all about. This is the current implementation of back office reporting. Adding back office to your solution allows the capability to break down total print and copy activity to each department and list high level details of the departmental activity. A report like this could be used to find which departments are the most print heavy or which departments might benefit from a review. Like Kevin said earlier, devices don't print, people do. Many times there's a policy in place about printing, something that might not be necessary. If you don't look, you won't discover. It's not about policing print in departments, but sometimes there's uh, activity that happens where print is happening and it's, um, it could be reduced or removed. So the best deployments, you saw this as well, <clears throat> set an objective, go through a discovery phase and learn some things, uh, come together to figure out a best solution, commit to making those changes, follow through, and hopefully meet those objectives and review where you're at. So in, in my idea of this is around plan, communicate, and measure. Uh, rinse, lather, and repeat. Uh, so set a goal, an obtainable goal that you can build on. Gather all the information you can to come up with the best solution, considering cost and value. Gain the buy-in from all the stakeholders to take a decisive action. Achieve the project as small steps or phases. Start the process again until the desired result is achieved. So monitor and measure at the milestones and communicate throughout is my advice to you. Even if you do your best to plan, communicate, and measure, there are still often challenges or obstacles that a project team may need to overcome. Here are a few of the most common ones. So one hurdle is in the establishment of roles for your system. Solutions can give great information and benefit, but only if you use it. Many times print management is an extra task thrust upon an IT or a card office staff. Um, some take to it better than others. 
This is why it's great to get buy-in from all the major players and make clearly defined role assignments early in the project. When it comes to data imports, what, which ones are needed for authenticated environments? Even more important for the managed back office environments. Where is the data and how do I get it into the system? How do I keep it up to date? Some examples of the systems that Uniprint connect to to either import or export data uh, include the following that you see here. The third major point in this area that I want to bring up is that of measurement. What can we measure and at which points? Even before an implementation of print management system, there are some measurements that can be taken. How much toner is, produced each, is purchased each year? How many clicks on the devices in a certain area? How often are the blue bins emptied in your environment? Once the management system is in place, will the owners of the system be looking to continually be improving your print environment? Will you be using the data available to you to reap those benefits? So a survey was done of, of representatives of over 75 organizations in, in, uh, across the world, and they found that reporting and data is incredibly important over the next years. Um, <clears throat> and Pharos has taken that information as well. And our updated reporting metrics that you, that you saw with Bill, and you'll see in another session, um, are how we can make things easier and better for our customers with the introduction of our Beacon platform. The idea is to bring the low-hanging fruit of our decision-making process to Pharos administrators. That way you don't have to go search out the data. It's there for you visually represented. This platform, designed especially for authenticated and managed back office customers, will bring all kinds of new insights with minimal effort. Thank you for your time.